Now it's time to talk about a group of viruses that gave us quite a scare ever since the movie Outbreak was released. And our scare was revitalized in 2014 with the Ebola outbreak. That's right, we're going to talk about the filoviruses, or as we call it here at Sketchy Micro, soccer fieldoviruses. For a virus that's caused such a worldwide scare, let's learn about it with the backdrop of the world's most popular sport. So filoviruses are negative sense, single-stranded, helical RNA viruses. And as you can see, this game is taking place at night, so that's how we're indicating that it's a negative sense RNA virus. We're also going to draw on these lights, or orange spirals, that are going along the post in the crossbar. And this is to remind you that the nuclear capsid of the virus is helical in shape. And like all of our RNA negative viruses, except for orthomyxovirus, this virus replicates in the cytoplasm. In addition to all of these characteristics, the virus is also enveloped. So to illustrate this, let's draw on our soccer players, one of them who was knocked over on the ground, probably feigning injury, has a jersey that seems to be a bit ill-fitting. It's a little too big and kind of looks like it's enveloping him. Also, there's no naked statue of David in the drawing, so you know it's not a naked virus. Now, let's introduce our star player. And if you haven't noticed yet, it's hard to tell from behind, we're in the presence of one of the most famous footballers in all of history. Definitely up there in the ranks with Messi or Ronaldo. If only he didn't play so dirty. That's right, it's Marburg. Looks like a typical dirty play in the box, but the ref will have to forgive him this time for such a sweet header into the goal. That's right, Marburg and Ebola, aka Ebola. Both viruses cause very similar symptoms in their infected hosts, which we shall see as soon as this game takes a turn for the worst. Take a look at the goalie. A little late to be diving into the picture. Missed that save by about a mile. It appears that his jersey has a bunch of spots on them. He's also red in the face and profusely sweating. One might say that he's just working really hard to save the goal, but in actuality, he's been infected with a filovirus and is starting to demonstrate signs of hemorrhagic fever. The sweating and redness indicate the fever, and the rashes, which aren't always present, can present as several microhemorrhages, or petechiae. These symptoms can start days to weeks after contracting the virus. Now, what do these symptoms progress to? Well, let's take a look at this opponent lying on the ground, who caught the infection a bit sooner than the goalie. Uh-oh, he's surrounded by a pool of blood. Turns out he wasn't feigning injury at all. Frankly, I'm embarrassed. There are even blood splotches on his jersey in the shape of kidneys and liver, which symbolize the organ failure that eventually takes over. Unfortunately, a lot of cases of filovirus infection, whether it's Ebola or Marburg, are eventually fatal, which is why the player looks a little dead in the eyes. Death usually occurs as a result of severe blood loss, leading to hypovolemic shock, and can occur within days of showing symptoms. We'll symbolize shock with this lightning bolt on the opposing player's jersey. Yep, this is all very terrifying, but who's at risk for getting this virus? Well, it's said to originate from direct contact with an animal infected with the virus. This animal could have been a monkey or other primate, but it could also have been a fruit bat, which may be the reservoir for the virus. So people in contact with monkeys or bats in endemic areas such as Africa are prone to getting infected. To illustrate this, we're going to draw in our medics sprinting out onto the field and they just happen to be trained monkeys. We'll also draw in a couple bats, one of whom's hanging from the goalpost, to remind you that the fruit bat is also a possible reservoir. The people most likely to get the virus that you'll see in the US, however, are the healthcare workers taking care of the infected individuals, hence the medics running onto the field about to get infected. Once people have gotten the virus, it can spread like wildfire through contact with bodily fluids especially after the death of an individual. So caution must be taken when treating patients, and then also when disposing of the body. I'm really sorry to end on such a morbid note, but this virus is really dangerous, and we have to be careful in order to avoid another epidemic.